Greetings, Terrarians, Chaos here. Last week, I was working on building this research facility and I had created a coral reef on the other side of the island. During that video, I mentioned that I wanted to make a tutorial on how you could create this reef yourself, so that is precisely what we're going to be doing today. So let's just get out of here. Who needs doors? In case you missed the video last week, and if you are interested in seeing how this island and the structure was built, I'll leave a link to the previous Commenter Day video in the description below, so be sure to check it out. And here is the coral reef. So what we're going to be doing today is working on building something similar to this, not the exact same because I don't think every coral reef should look the exact same, but I'll give you tips and tricks on how you can make one of your own. And it all starts off with an ocean. If you're building with mods or if you have access to T-Edit, I recommend that you drain the entire ocean as it's going to make building the reef possible. But if that's not an option for you, and if you're playing on vanilla and you simply don't have the time or the resources to do the entire ocean drain, what I recommend doing is grabbing some bubble block and kind of mapping out how big you want the coral reef to be and just drawing a box around that area. Then you can use either the super absorbent sponge or some pumps to drain the water out. It's still gonna be a bit of a lengthy process, but it's going to be much faster than trying to drain and then refill the entire ocean. Me, however, since I do have access to T-Edit, I'm just going to drain this ocean and we'll be right back. With the ocean drained, we can now get started on the coral reef and what you're going to be needing for the foundation of the reef, which will take up the majority of the build, will be coral stone block, surprising I know, sandstone block, yes I know, also typical for me, but there you go, living leaf wall, and some flesh block wall as well. And we're going to start off with the sandstone block with some gray paint. And basically what we're going to be doing is just creating some jagged looking rocks or perhaps they might even be uh, dead coral. But what we're going to be doing with this is just creating platforms for which we can build the rest of the reef off of. So that's why we're using this as the bottom layer. You could also interchange this a bit, a little bit higher up, but personally I like to make these lower. Now, I like to leave some gaps with sand, and usually my oceans taper off a little bit less than this. This is a pretty steep ocean, but we could still work with it, because not everybody's ocean will be completely tapered to a nice, more island look. And you might have something that's more steep like this, and you might not have the time to actually change your ocean up itself. So when you're building these rock platforms, something to keep in mind is you want some flat surfaces with which you can build off of. And that's what I'm kind of focusing on right now is just creating a couple of flat surfaces. But I also want this to be kind of rounded and smooth as well at the same time. And having little caverns within the rock structure can also be quite nice if you leave little gaps like this. And I think I'll just do a couple more and then we'll move on to the coral stone. So before we start shaping anything, I'm going to go ahead and switch to the coral stone itself. And we're not going to use any paint for this. And the reason why we don't want to use any paint is because it alternates randomly between some very vibrant colors, which add quite a bit of texture and depth to the coral reef. If we were to paint this one color and do it all ourselves, it's still possible. I would recommend using any number of deep paints and just changing them up periodically. But personally, I prefer it to not be painted at all. And what we're going to be doing here is just adding some of these coral blocks to the stone structure in various different patterns. Uh, you can kind of go chaotic and random with the design here. You can have some areas that are thin, some areas that are thicker. Really just do whatever you want. And the more filled this is, the better. But do make sure that you leave, again, more surfaces and gaps for you to place decorations on, on top of. Because the coral reef is going to be more than just these blocks and walls. The uh, 
Majority of the reef will be the blocks and walls, sure, but the best looking part is actually going to come for the decorations, so make sure you leave plenty of flat surfaces with which to place them on. Once you're happy with the stone and the coral stone, and you can go ahead and keep altering it as much or as little as you want until you're content with it, go ahead and grab your hammer and just start smoothing everything out. Now, I do want to just express one last time to make sure that you leave places to actually place blocks, so don't go too smooth with everything. Also, when it comes to shaping the stone, I tend to shape it a little bit different than I shape the coral. I try to give little pointy edges like this because they're a great place to hang vines or kelp off of, and I tend to make the stone a little bit more smooth than I make the coral block itself. Now, you'll notice that these blocks don't exactly blend together, and that's going to be okay because what we're going to be doing is filling in the gaps in between everything with walls. Because if we don't fill in those gaps, what we're going to end up with is some areas where light poke through the water. And I'll show you that later on in the tutorial. But don't be afraid that these don't blend together. You don't need to worry about it like that. You can go ahead and just leave all of the gaps here and it'll look just fine once we're done. If you feel like shaping any blocks in between, you can. Uh, just little gaps like this, but while it might add some texture to the stone There's something to keep in mind that you won't actually be able to fill it up with water So if you want to have small little gaps like that within the stone What I recommend doing is just knocking out a single block which you can then fill in with water and Then shape the area around that because what that will do is is the water in that gap will spread to the tiles to the side and beneath it. Not above it, so I don't actually recommend shaping directly above a hole like this, but you can go to the left, to the right, or down below and still have the water fill in the areas visually. You also need to be careful if you have areas like this, where we have a gap in here but no space for water to appear, so we can create a little, I guess, not an air pocket, but a water pocket right up there, which will fix that problem as well. Next, we're going to start placing the walls. And what I'm going to do is grab some white paint with my paint sprayer on and some living leaf wall. And this kind of emulates what the stone looks like. And you can bring this up a little bit past any of the areas of the coral reef that you want just to give depth to the entire build. If everything's just filling in these gaps, you won't really see any depth. Also, don't be afraid to leave gaps between the walls in certain places so that light can come through. So if I were to cover this cave up entirely, you won't be able to see it very well once we fill the area in with water. So I'll leave some areas like that where light can still shine through. So what we're going to do is just work through the entire area and just fill in most of these gaps with walls. And once we're done with that, we're going to switch to the flesh block wall, and this is what we're going to be using to actually add more color to the background walls. So, there's a lot of vibrant colors within Coral Reef, and we want to emulate that. So I have a bunch of different deep paints. I prefer to keep them more on the red to green specter than the blue, because the blue doesn't translate very well once you start adding water in, and you can almost not see the blue and purple at all. So I keep with the teal, green, lime, yellow, orange, and red. And what we're going to do is just grab the color that we want and the flesh block with the paint sprayer again and just add little segments of color throughout the reef. And don't be afraid to break out some of the stone that you had. It's not a big deal. Just wherever feels right. I try to incorporate some color within the entire build, which is precisely what you could do. I'm going to start off doing one color at a time just to make it easier on myself so I'm not having to constantly shuffle around paints. If you're unsure about how the paint sprayer works, I do have a basics tutorial to building out and that tutorial covers how the paint sprayer functions. So if you'd like to take a more in-depth look at that particular tool, I'll leave a link to that video in the description as well. 
So once we're done with red, I'm just going to switch to the orange paint and just add a little bit more color. It's not going to be as vibrant as the red is just because of the way that the orange interacts with the uh, flesh wall. So I'm not going to be using as much of this color because I'd rather have the build pop out more than be muted. But I do want a little bit of orange in there. And then we'll just move down the line doing a little bit of color at a time. Some colors will function a little better than others will. You can see the uh, yellow paint is a little better than the orange paint, but it's still fairly dark and that's going to be okay. We're just adding uh, basically splashes of color, which will be accented once we start adding the decoration pieces in. So don't worry too much that the color isn't extremely vibrant because remember this is just background detail still. So the reason why we're using flesh block wall here instead of the living leaf wall is because the living leaf wall doesn't hold color very well. It's very very dark and extremely muted whenever you paint it with colors and we want a block that can hold color decently well. It might not be the most vibrant block but at least you could add color to it. And we also wanted it to have a bit of texture to it as well. So the wall that fits the best, in my opinion, is flesh. You could use another kind of wall if you want to, just my personal preference, but do whatever you want to do. Once we finish placing all of the blocks in the walls, it's time to start placing the decorations. Now here I have some starfish, some seashells, and some coral, all of which have different varieties, and you can control which ones are placed simply by moving your mouse around. As you can see, every time I move my mouse, it changes which texture is popping up, and whatever is showing when you click is going to be what is placed. Sometimes the image will end up being flipped, but it's still going to be the same style and the same color. So what we're going to do here is just add a bunch of coral and a few seashells and a few starfish. I don't like to go overboard with both of those, but we're going to add all of those to the reef. I'm going to be leaving some space intentionally for other kinds of decorations, but we're just starting off with these. I like to try and avoid any of the teeny tiny ones, maybe like this one or this tiny rock looking one right there. You can barely see it past the mouse pointer because those don't translate very well once we start adding the water in. You can't see them almost at all. So I try to avoid using them as much as possible. A little on occasion, if I have a dark space like that, the little blue one can look okay. But I'd prefer to get a bunch of these larger corals around the build. Uh, particularly towards the top because that's where you're going to see the best whenever we add the water back in. So when it comes to placing the shells, I try to do just a couple so we have all of the varieties covered, but I don't like to waste too much of the space because we don't have a ton of space for decoration. So I'm going to try and place just a couple of each of these styles of starfish and shells so that we have some variety in here. And there are going to be three variety of the starfish. With those out of the way, we're going to move on to plants. So we're going to fill the area in with some dye plants to give more variety to the reef. But the reason why we needed to drain the water is because of these dye plants. You'll see over here I have a little pocket of water and I have three variety of strange plants, some blueberries, some orange bloodroot, and some lime kelp. If I try placing the dye plants within the water, you could see that nothing actually gets placed except for the orange bloodroot and the lime kelp. That's just the way that those function. Now, if we were to remove the water on the flip side of this, you'll see that we can place everything, including the orange bloodroot, except for the lime kelp. You're unable to place that unless it has water filling up that space. You can place everything else. However, I did not mean to remove that tile. If we place the dye plants first, and then we fill the area up with water, they don't get broken. 
so we can actually get the dye plants in the water. We just need to follow a specific order of operations by placing the dye plant, by placing the dye plants, then placing the water, and then at the very end, you can add the lime kelp in as well. We're going to be taking all of these dye plants and pretty much covering any flat surface with them to add a bunch of variety and texture to the coral reef. I do paint the dye plants, but I do not recommend painting this orange strange plant. You'll see here if I turn on my paint sprayer and I add some paint to it, it pretty much wipes out all of the texture within the plant. It holds the paint a little too well, in my opinion, and it looks plasticky to me. It does not look like it belongs. But when it's unpainted, it has a bunch of different textures. It adds a really vibrant color, which is why I like to use it. The other dye plants, you're safe to paint as much as you want. They will add a bunch of different color and texture to the coral reef without taking away uh, the authentic feeling by making it look plasticky. I prefer to work just one type of plant at a time to make sure that I have all of the plants covered. I can knock some out later if I need to make space. I could also remove some of the blocks if I want to make space in other locations as well. And I'm going to just place a couple of one color and then switch to another color just to keep the variety going. And maybe I'll try and do it to where the colors are further apart so we don't have all of the reds on one side and all of the greens on the other. And I don't really like that plant in orange. It kind of looks brown to me, so I'm going to skip that color. Once we have all of the other dye plants in place, it's time to refill this with water because as you can see, we cannot place any kelp at the moment, and that's going to be a nice looking detail to add towards the end. So the painstaking task of adding water. If you did this with a bubble box, you're going to probably have to do this via by pump, though I highly recommend obtaining a bottomless water bucket and using that instead. It's going to save you a lot of time. Um, if you have access to Tietit, however, like I do, I would definitely recommend going ahead and hopping into Tietit, and I'll show you a really, really simple way to do this almost instantly within Tietit. So here we have the coral reef, which looks a lot different without any paint on it because you can't really see the paint in Tietid. But what we're going to do is just grab the area of the ocean from one end to the other. And then we're going to grab our paint tool or our fill tool over here. And we're going to, if you're on uh, tiles and walls over here in paint mode, you're going to drop down into liquid and select water and just click within the box to fill it in with water. And I'm currently not displaying liquid. Oops, there we go. So you'll see that it fills in the ocean, but there are still a bunch of different gaps within here. So what we're going to do is just box off the coral reef itself, grab our brush tool and make it larger and just draw within this box. And what that's going to do if I get rid of this, you could see that it fills in all of these tiny little gaps with water instantly, making this a much, much easier task to fill in the water. Once we're back in game, we're going to have to touch up the build in several spots. As you can see here, we have some light poking through. And why this happens is we have some areas that have a gap in between them with no walls in the background. So all we need to do is fill in those areas with walls. And now make sure you watch your breath whenever you're underwater. I have cheat sheet on and I have God mode enabled, so I'm not going to drown, but you need to make sure that you don't drown when you're trying to do this. Another issue that you'll see here, like in this pocket right here, it's flickering light in between the gaps. And you can see that down here as well as I walk by. We're going to fill in all of those spaces with walls so that we have no more light flickering. So we just need to touch up everything really quick. And once you're done with the touch up, we can go ahead and start placing kelp. So any location where we have a flat surface remaining that doesn't have anything on it, we're going to fill that in with some kelp. And I recommend using 
some deep green paint on top of the kelp because it's easier to see in that fashion. At this point, the coral reef is pretty much done. You can leave it like this if you would like, but there's a few things that we can do to touch it up so that it can be seen a little better. As you can see here, it gets dark in water really fast, and that's why I really wish that they would change the way that light interacts with water so we could see underwater a bit better because half of this coral reef is completely uh, unseeable. But there are a few things that we could do to kind of improve that. And one of the things is to grab an icy fountain. And if we just turn that on, it brightens up the water and you can see the outlines of the coral reef better. It doesn't make the darker sections that much easier to see. But since the edges of the water aren't as dark, you can see the outlines quite a bit better. The trade-off is it takes a bit of the color away from the decorations up here near the surface, so it's not a perfect fix, but it is an option. And if you want to use the fountains, but you don't want to see the fountain, I recommend digging your way underground, probably around 10 to 12 tiles so that it gets dark, and then placing a layer of uh, background walls that are very dark like the obsidian and just painting that with shadow and then placing the fountain itself turning it on and painting that shadow as well and what that's going to do is block out all of the light and then we could just come up here to the surface again and place a bunch of sand and you can no longer see the fountain that is all of the way at the bottom over there, but it still affects the light color. You might need to do that multiple times if you have a really wide area or if you're doing a build off to the side of the coral reef, because as you step further away from the fountain, the water will change in color. Another thing that we can do to help us see within the area a bit better is to come down here and place some glowing blocks or furniture or pieces like that. I don't use GemSpark for this in particular because it's a little too bright for me and it makes everything look a little artificial. I like to make it look like it's glowing naturally. So you'll see if we just remove some of the coral and we place a couple of crystals in areas here and there and we go back up and let me just zoom out a little bit, you'll see that it has a faint glow to it, which could be pretty good for the area in the darker segments. Um, I wouldn't really do it up here because having bioluminescent uh, life forms that close to the surface is not as common. So maybe in the deeper segments, you can place those. Another thing that we could try to do is to hide some of these jellyfish jars. And they'll also have the added benefit of looking like there's a jellyfish in the water. Uh, what I recommend doing is actually painting these with some black paint because the way the jellyfish look, you could still see the jellyfish just fine and the bowl will be uh, easier to blend in with the background walls if you paint it black. We can't really do that with any of the other fish like this goldfish because it will actually paint the goldfish black. So we can't add a whole lot of fish to it by adding cold goldfish to this, but we can come in here and say if I carve out an area right here and I just place this bowl in here and I paint it black. Now I'll need to place some more walls in here just to offset the lighting and refill it with water. But if we come back up to the surface and I clear out that area right there, you'll see that we have what appears to be a jellyfish in the water, which is a really nice detail. And something to mention, looking at it, you can see I filled in this area with water, but there's an air gap in there. And that's going to be something that you have to deal with if you're filling this in manually. And what I would recommend doing is actually knocking out a block above right here, filling that in with water, and then adding, let me grab my paint sprayer, just grab that sandstone, place that right back, and you can see the gap has been filled in completely, and you don't need to worry about the air gap. So if you have any air gaps when you're filling in the water like that, just knock out the block above, fill it in with water, and then place the block back. 
One final thing that we could do to enhance the environment of this coral reef is to add statues that have fish, shark, jellyfish in it. And if you just run some wire into it and activate it, we end up with those fish swimming in the water, which is pretty fantastic. And it's not difficult at all to hide a statue within the coral reef. Just paint it to match whatever block is in the background or whatever walls in the background and just run it into some wire and you'll hardly notice it's there at all. And that's going to do it for this coral reef bill tip tutorial. If you enjoyed the video and you found it helpful, please consider subscribing to my channel. If you already subscribed, please consider hitting that notification bell. And if you've already done that, thank you very, very much. I greatly appreciate it. I'm hoping the channel will reach 100,000 subscribers before June 20th, and I would be very thankful if you all helped me reach that goal. Let me know in the comments what kind of tutorials you would like to see me cover on the channel, and thank you all very much for watching. I'll catch you all later. Happy building.